Let us see some tests to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones. For aldehydes, we have two important tests that is tolerance test and failings test and for ketones, we have the haloform reaction. First, let us see the aldehyde. So, the first test is called the tolerance test where we use a tolerance reagent. So, we take an aldehyde, okay, I have taken acetaldehyde, then we treat it with ammoniacal silver nitrate solution. That is, we take silver nitrate solution and ammonia, we add it in water to form ammonium hydroxide, mix those two, then we will get ammoniacal silver nitrate solution and this is the tolerance reagent. Then to that you add a base, that is you make it alkaline, then what will happen is the aldehyde will get oxidized to CH3COO minus. So, tolerance reagent is a mild oxidizing agent. So, this get converting the aldehyde to acid. Then here we can see that silver is in the plus 1 oxidation state that will get reduced to silver Ag and this will be precipitate. Then we have water plus ammonia. So, here the important observation what we can see is that silver will get precipitated on along the walls of the test tube when we do the experiment and this test will be answered by both aliphatic and aromatic aldehydes. So, even if we take benzaldehyde the tolerance test will respond to that. Next one is the Fehling's test. So, here you have two solution, Fehling's A and Fehling's B. Fehling's A is an aqueous solution of copper sulphate and Fehling's B is sodium potassium tartarate and this is an alkaline solution. This is a salt which is also called the Rochelle salt. So, we prepare this separately, then add that to the aldehyde which we have taken. So, again I have taken acetaldehyde. So, here copper 2 plus that is copper sulphate solution. So, potassium, sodium potassium tartrate. So, you add all this to this aldehyde. Again, as I told you, even failing solution is a mild oxidizing agent. So, it will oxidize the aldehyde to the acid plus the copper here which was in the plus 2 oxidation state will now get converted to plus 1 oxidized, oxidized like you know get oxidized to Cu2O that is copper is getting reduced and the aldehyde is getting oxidized plus water. So, in the observation what we will see here is the Cu2O which is a red precipitate. So, you can see copper is getting reduced to copper plus 1. Here it is plus 2 state and here it is plus 1. So, this is called the cuprous oxide. So, when you do the experiment, you can see a red precipitate, you know, getting formed. As I told you, since this is a mild oxidizing agent, aldehyde will get oxidized to acid and this will be answered only by aliphatic aldehydes. Okay, aromatic aldehyde will not respond to this test. In case in the exam, they ask you an aromatic and an aliphatic aldehyde, how to distinguish between them, then you can do this failings test because it will answer only for aliphatic and not for aromatic. If you want to prove that is aromatic aldehyde, then go for the tolerance test. Next one we will see for ketones, uh, important reaction is the haloform reaction. Here we take the ketone, so uh, a very important thing is here is it should be a methyl ketone. To one side of the carbonyl group there should be a methyl group attached, otherwise it will not give the test. So in, you cannot you know, expect every ketone to answer this test. As I told you the important part is the CH3CO. Now, to this we add sodium hypohalite, okay, that is sodium hydroxide plus I2, you can also take Cl2 or Br2. So, then it will form sodium hypoiodite. If you take chloride, it will form chloride, okay. So, when you treat with this reagent, it will form again as I told you, this will also get oxidized CH3CO, ONA, look at this, suppose 
I break here. So the ONA part will get attached here and the CH3 part will get converted to the halophone that is CHI3. So this is the iodophone. As I have already told you, if you take bromine, then this will form bromophone that is CHBR3 or if you take chlorine, it will form CHCl3 which is chloroform. So if you take iodophone, this one will form a yellow precipitate, very light yellow precipitate. Another important thing here is it can be answered even by aldehyde that is CH3CHO. You can see here that there is a CH3 group attached to the CO group. Even this aldehyde will answer this test then it will also be answered by any methyl ketones. So you can see here one side there is CH3, other side it is ethyl. So because there is a COCH3 group, this ketone will also answer this test. You can also see here acetone also will answer this test. Then you can also take an alcohol that is CH3, CH2OH, okay. Because this can be oxidized to the uh, like you know aldehyde, then you can also take CH3, CHOH, okay or any group, alkyl group here. So, if there is a CH3, CHOH group, or even these compounds will answer this haloform test, okay. Now, which will not give, suppose, so all this will give you the positive iodoform test and it will not be answered for compounds like this. Why? Because there is no CH3 group attached to the CO group. Both sides here it is ethyl, so this will not give the haloform test. Now I think you have understood this, so this will be followed by some experiments to show you the color changes. Hi, we will see experiment today to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones. So we have already studied about two important reactions of aldehyde that is Tollens test and Fehling's test. So today we will see the Tollens test. So only aldehydes will answer this test and ketones will not answer this test. Another thing is both aliphatic and aromatic aldehydes will answer Tollens test. So today I have taken an aldehyde which is acetaldehyde which is an aliphatic aldehyde. I am going to add ammoniacal silver nitrate. So I have taken in two test tubes one is ammoniacal silver nitrate and a base only in the presence of a base silver will get deposited in the sides of the test tube okay. First I am going to add a base to the aldehyde that is acetaldehyde. Next I am going to add ammoniacal silver nitrate. You can see as soon as I add this ammoniacal silver nitrate, you can see that silver mirror is getting deposited. So slightly when we heat it, okay, you can see the silver color getting deposited on the sides of the test tube. So let us wait for some time till it gets heated. So what happens in this reaction is, okay, silver is in the form of silver nitrate. So when you add to the aldehyde, silver will get reduced okay, from silver nitrate to the elemental silver and the aldehyde will get oxidized to the acid. So water is already hot. So now if you observe closely, you can see that silver mirror is formed along the sides of the test tube. So this is a positive tolerance test for only aldehydes. As I told you, this will be answered by both aliphatic and aromatic aldehyde. Let us see the next test for aldehydes. So this experiment is the failing solution test. So here we have to prepare two solutions that is failings A and failings B. Failings A is an aqueous solution of copper sulphate and failings B is an alkaline solution of sodium potassium tartrate which is also called the Rochelle salt. Okay? Now we are going to add this freshly prepared solution to the aldehyde which I have taken. So this is acetaldehyde. 
Okay. So, first let us add the copper sulphate. So, this is failings A. Then we will be adding sodium potassium tartrate. After adding these two, we have to heat it. So, I am going to place this inside the water bath. So, what will happen here is copper sulphate which is in the plus 2 state, okay, copper in the plus 2 state will get reduced to cuprous oxide that is Cu2O and the aldehyde which will, will get oxidized to an acid and felling solution is a mild oxidizing agent. So, this test again will be answered only by aliphatic aldehydes and not by aromatic aldehydes and even ketones will not answer this test. You can see slowly the color is changing at the bottom. So, that is copper is getting reduced that is from plus 2 state to plus 1 state. So, you will get a brown or reddish brown color of the cuprous oxide. You can see here slowly it is getting, it is turning, the color is changing, let us heat it for some more time. So, as you can see the color has changed from blue to green to reddish brown precipitate. So, I can show you here. So, you can see the reddish brown precipitate here. So, this shows that the aldehyde has got oxidized to acid and copper sulphate that is copper in the plus 2 state has got reduced to cuprous oxide that is copper in plus 1 state. So, you can see the color reddish brown color. Let us see the test for ketones now. Ketones can be tested experimentally using the haloform test. Okay. So, the important thing in a ketone should be there should be a methyl group attached to the carbonyl group. Only such ketones will answer this test. So, let us see the reaction now. The ketone which I have taken is acetone here. Okay. Then that to that we have to add sodium hypohalate. So, the halogen which I have taken here is iodine. So, iodine I have dissolved it in the spirit. Okay. Then I have also taken, we have to do it in alkaline medium. So, I have also taken sodium hydroxide uh, solution that is sodium hydroxide dissolved in water. Okay. So, let me take the acetone now, just adding it to this test tube. So, first let me prepare the sodium hypoiodide. So, as I told you, sodium hypoiodide can be prepared using iodine solution and sodium hydroxide. So, first I am making this iodine solution alkaline by adding sodium hydroxide. And this one is added to the ketone. So, you can see slight yellow precipitate is formed at the bottom. So, that precipitate is nothing but CHI3 that is iodoform. So, you can see the precipitate is forming slowly. So, in case we use chlorine instead of iodine, so we will get chloroform that is CHCl3. In case we use bromine, then we will get bromoform that is CHBr3. So, that is why this reaction is called the haloform reaction. 